This is the E911 Talk Podcast, episode 84, for Monday, May 14th, 2012. Welcome to this edition of E911 Talk with your host, Mark Fletcher, product line manager for emergency services at Avaya. Now, here's Fletch. What single question to 50 people has 17 different answers and 33? What was the question again? The answer? What is your state legislation for E911 regarding MLTS PBX systems? It's hard to believe that in this day and age, with 911 celebrating its 44th birthday this past February 16th, that E911 in PBX systems is mandated in only 17 states. Despite the many tragic stories where the life of a worker may have been saved, even with the most simplistic technology, or worse yet, a vetted procedure to follow, year after year goes by with only minimal legislative action. Even in the states that have legislation, the message is often unclear, and certainly not in sync with the other areas around the country. 40,000 square foot resolution in Chicago, 22,500 square feet resolution in Massachusetts, and even station level in other areas. Four years ago, NINA, the National Emergency Number Association, published the MLTS model legislation in an attempt to provide guidance to states undertaking legislative action. Overall, the document was well received and and various elements of it showed up in legislative works in Virginia, Massachusetts, Michigan, and even the Public Utilities Commission recommendations made to the state of California. The model legislation covered an area that the work group considered to be one of the biggest roadblocks for an enterprise. That being location reporting granularity. After many weeks of discussions and open debate, building fire alarm zones was suggested to be fair and representative of a solution that would solve the problem. This solution relied on the ability for the MLTS to send and the PSAP to receive a specific caller ID or emergency location identification number, ELIN, based on the location of the caller. Pre-provisioned alley records could then exist in the alley database and indicate a zone within the building to the 911 call taker. Where our committee stopped, though, didn't take into consideration the implementation side of the network. While some carriers make this task a simple one to implement, others do not, and costly additional services are required to be activated in order to pass any station-specific phone number to the PSAP. In California, the argument was made that Any specific caller ID can be passed by the PBX on non-emergency calls, and that number will be displayable to the called party. However, a call from that exact same station to 911 would have its caller ID screened and possibly removed at the central office, only to have the main billing number attached. Administrative Law Judge Kimberly Kim of the California Public Utilities Commission requested additional comments to be filed by the carriers highlighting any specific services that would be required to enable this functionality. In response to that request, all the carriers except one responded that this specific functionality was available at no additional cost to the end user. If you want to find out who, you'll need to follow the California legislative process, and you can find the link on my blog at www.avaya.com forward slash Fletcher. One other state, however, took the initiative to ensure this particular concern was covered in their administrative laws, and that was Washington State. In WAC 480-120-450, which covers the enhanced 911 obligations of a local exchange company, multi-line customers must have the ability to dial 911 with common signaling protocols which permit the call and the caller's ELIN to be transmitted to the E911 selective router. This means, by law, they have to honor the caller ID sent by the PBX. Additionally, the LEC must permit the PBS customers to maintain their own E911 database, as long as it's in a nationally accepted format, but the customers have a right to transmit updates to that database at no additional charge. Now, the initial work by the NITA MLTS committee in 2000 Focus on reporting a device location within a large multi-story or multi-building campus. Four years ago, the second round of that committee focused on the mobility that voice over IP provided to users and how to track that mobility within the enterprise. The document was also moved from a TID or technical information document to a TRD, technical requirements document, and a new companion technical information document 06-502 
was created to aid in educating policy officials, government agencies, and users of MLTS systems, specifically about E911 obligations. The accompanying TID and diagrams discuss many of the issues related to the location of individuals during emergencies. It further outlines the current suggested methods of dealing with the challenges as recommended by the National Emergency Number Association MLTS Workgroup Policy on Mobility. Now, several weeks back while I was at 911 Goes to Washington, I ran into Mary Boyd from Entrada. Mary is also a NENA past president and chaired the committee on MLTS legislation. We got into a discussion about MLTS and both concluded that, once again, technology has radically changed enough that it's time once again to review the model legislation for MLTS systems. Personally, I feel it's important for Nina to stay current with the rapidly changing technology, the new methodologies, and operational functionality that modern MLTS and adjunct systems can provide and keep the public safety industry moving forward at a pace that's comparable with the technology curves being deployed. I'm encouraged by the rapid acceptance and accelerated deployment of next-generation 911 networks around the nation, as well as the synergy that I witnessed with next-generation 112 networks in Europe at the European Union Emergency Services Workshop sponsored by ENA in Riga. Finally, don't forget coming up next week in Boston, is the International Avaya Users Group Education Conference. On Sunday, May 20th at 3.30 in the afternoon, I will be hosting the great E911 debate with panelists Nick Meyer from Red Sky, Bill Sveen from 911 ETC, Tim Kenyon from Conveyant, and Lev Deitch from 911 Enable. These vendors represent the most common implementation strategies for Enterprise E911. And I'm looking forward to a lively and informative discussion as each panelist positions their strategy for today and their vision for tomorrow. Be sure to get in Boston in time for this session on Sunday. You've been listening to the E911 Talk Podcast with your host, Mark Fletcher, Product Line Manager for Emergency Services at Avaya. E911 Talk is a weekly podcast available on sites like this, as well as iTunes, and is available free of charge. If you have any comments or questions, you can email Fletch at FletcherM at Avaya.com. That's Fletcher, the letter M, at Avaya.com. Be sure to listen in next week for more informative topics on E911. 911, the line is recorded. What is the exact location of your emergency?